In this video I will be talking about the preflop menu. You will get to the preflop menu by double clicking a preflop condition. I'll just double click this one. And there we are. So let's have a look at what all of the buttons do. First of all the buttons here should be rather trivial. The button that reads random will select all hands in the matrix. The button that reads clear will clear the matrix. And here we have a number of buttons that will help you to quickly select pocket pairs, broadways, suited connectors, one cap suited connectors, off suit connectors, suited aces, and finally pretty trash. At the bottom here we have a slider that will select the top X percent of hands. However, should you not be happy with this particular hand ranking, then there's a number of them available under this drop down here. For example, if I select poker stuff, then now the slider uses the poker stuff hand ranking. Now, should you want to edit the ranges in this drop down, or if you want to select another ranking as the standard ranking that is used by the slider, then you can do so by leaving the menu, going to blinds, stacks, etc., edit preflop hand rankings, or by clicking this icon in the toolbar, and that will bring up the hand ranking editor. However, I'll talk about this menu in one of the later videos. Ok, back to the preflop menu. Here we have a button that says use variable. And if I click it, I can select a variable from 1 through 20. I'll select variable number 2. And if I now press done, and go to the variable menu. Ok, I'll just set variable 2 to, let's say 70. And if I now compute, then small blind is now indeed racing with the top 70% of his hands. And if I set variable 2 to, let's say, 50, and compute, then small blind now races with the top 50% of hands. Using a variable for a top percentage can be very handy to create a graph. Let me just quickly create such a graph to demonstrate that. First I'll set a checkpoint uh, here. And we'll make a graph by varying variable 2 from 0 to 100 with a step of 25 and go. And here's our graph that shows how small blind's expected value depends on the value for variable 2. Ok, back to the preflop menu. By the way, if you want to use a different hand ranking for the top variable percent of hands, then again, you can select the ranking that you want in this drop down. I'll just restore this. Now let's say that we want to enter just one specific hand, for example Ace-King suited of spades. When you select just one hand in this menu, a suit select submenu will appear in the lower right. Here you can select spades. Now this only works if you enter specifically one hand. If you enter two or more, then this counts as a range and the suit select menu will disappear. This is because in this software hands are treated just like they are in real life. You can't select suits in the preflop phase, since after all, that's not how you play a hand in real life either. If you have a range in this matrix and you want to filter for suits, then you will have to do so in the post-flop phase. For more on that, please see the video on the post-flop menu. Ok, let me just select another range. Here, on top, we have the weight buttons. You can use these if you want to apply a weight to a certain starting hand. To do so, first click one of the weight buttons. I'll select weight number 1. And now a weight bar will be drawn over every hand you click. And here, in the lower right, it shows that this green bar stands for weight number 1. And weight number 1 is currently set at 100%. To change the weight, either use this weight slider or use the scroller on your mouse. And if I press done to accept our condition, then you'll see that we're now racing under two conditions. We're racing 100% of the time with this range, and only 40% of the time with the suited connectors, which is something that you can also tell because it says 40% in front of the range's name. To edit the weight at this point, right click the condition, and I'll make the weight 55%, and the weight has now changed to 
Okay, back to the menu. In the left part of the screen is a sub-menu where you can store and load predefined ranges. And these ranges are grouped under categories. Let me just add a new category here. And to add a range to a category, press Store Range. And to see what's in the range, mouse over it. And the starting hand matrix will show in purple what the range will look like if you load it. To load the range, double click it. And there it is. If you want to change the order of the categories here, then you can just drag and drop them. For example, I'll drag the bottom category to the top. And now it's on top. And the same applies to changing the order of the ranges within a category. To delete a range or category, select it by clicking it, and then press Del on your keyboard. On top here, there's a checkbox that says Clear Mode. Currently, it's on. And this means that every time you load a range from this menu, the matrix will be cleared before the range is loaded. So here, under Range Parts, if I select Pocket Pairs, then we load pockets. Or Broadways. Or One Capsuled Connectors. And so on. However, in this particular category, we actually want to add these range parts to our existing range. For that, turn Clear Mode off. And if I now double click a range to load it, it will be added to the current range instead of replacing it. And should I want to apply a weight to a certain sub-range, then first select one of the weight buttons here. And now, if clear mode is off, the range will be added to the existing range with the selected weight applied to it. And now, for our last button, the text input output button. Clicking this button will give a string, with the current range. And it's also capable of loading such a string. However, if clear mode is off, just like with the predefined ranges, when you enter a range, it will be added to the existing range instead of replacing it. So, please keep that in mind. Now, there's one more thing that needs to be said about the weight system. Namely, you may actually want to apply a variable to a weight. For that, right-click the weight button, and you will be able to attach a variable to that weight. Finally, if you have just completed an EV run, and I'll just make one now, then you can of course see the expected values of all the starting hands by mousing over a condition. Let's go to the preflop menu. It may be handy to see these expected values in this menu as well. For that, press Tab to toggle to EV mode. And now, all expected values of the starting hands will be displayed in the menu as well. And the hand with the highest expected value will get a green highlight drawn around it. And the one with the lowest expected value will get a purple one. Uh, okay, and that should wrap up this video on the preflop menu.